Hello and welcome. I'm Andreas Fertig. I work as a trainer and consultant primarily for C++. And I'm also the creator of C++ Insights. And this is also the tool I like to talk about in this series. Today I like to take the chance to talk a little bit more about templates. We already talked about templates and then template instantiations using function templates and a little bit of um, what the, the hurdles uh, are there that C++ Insights has to deal with. Today I like to focus on class templates. I have here hopefully a very brief example. I have this struct template or class template, how I would like to spell it, test here. It comes with a single function fun and that one returns true. Implementation wouldn't matter, but just for the sake of completeness, it's here. Now, um, below in main and line number eight, I am creating an object of test int, call it t, and I use braced initialization to initialize the object. Now, if I transform this in C++ Insights, we can see that the compiler, in fact, creates an instantiation of test of int for us. And you have to look closely here. On the first side, it may look like it comes with a function fun, but it doesn't have a body because fun isn't used. This is a very interesting thing when it comes to templates. Compilers are not eager to instantiate all methods of your class templates. They instantiate only what they need to instantiate, which at the start gives you the chance of way better code generation because there is nothing the linker or the compiler later has to optimize away. So once I start using this function fun, then we can see that the output changes slightly on the right now we can see that fun in fact has a body. This is an interesting difference from class templates to regular classes. Regular classes, the compiler already has the code, so the function is there. For class templates, the compiler has to create the function, it has to instantiate it. And once there is no reason, the compiler doesn't do it. So upfront, less code. I'm not saying that in the end both versions cannot be the same because we have very smart optimizers and linkers, but they have less work to do here. So this is for regular functions in class templates. Now what if I make this function fun virtual and I type correctly, of course. If I transform this, then no big surprise, my function fun in the instantiation in line number 11 on the right is now also decorated with virtual because it's a virtual function. We also see that now in line number 16, I got a default constructor. This is to initialize the V table, which we require for virtual functions, but that's another topic we are not going to cover today. So. So far, except for the default construct that the compiler now provides for us, there is no difference. Okay, we wrote that virtual, so it's there, it's fine. Now let me remove the call to our function fun in the object t. What happens there? And if you now look at the right, you see no difference. The function fun is still there. It now gets instantiated. This is a huge difference between virtual and non-virtual functions in class templates. Whenever you mark a function virtual in a class template, it gets instantiated regardless whether you're using it or not, oh, given that it doesn't need additional template arguments, of course. So, but in the simple example, as we have it here, by simply marking that function fun, it gets instantiated and now linker and optimizer have to deal with it to get rid of it if possible. So this is a case for not making your functions unnecessarily virtual. If you're not already convinced, maybe this may convince you because it simply at least is more um, compile time because the compiler now has to create this function. I think this is a useful difference to know from non-virtual to virtual functions in class templates. So I hope you learned something today about this 
and you tune in for one of the next episodes. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Bye-bye.